Okay, so uh, for our scene breakdown, I just want to show you effectively, this is what we're going to do in the tutorial. Uh, actually, it's a, it's a redone of this scene, so it's not exactly the same scene because I wanted to do it fresh and I want to do it with you from the beginning. So effectively, what we've got is we're going to have a shot from up here and it's going to come down, going past some of these pillars, and then we're going down and we're seeing the skull on an altar uh, surrounded by some pillars and you know this particular sort of um sort of surface and we've got these candles here which they're actually using the niagara uh candles we've got the skull we've got this cloth sort of thing here that i told you about this we're going to need to learn how to make in uh, blender with like uh um you know sort of like uh, creases and things like that then we've got the skull all of these assets are from either mega scans or they're from um, a sketch fab so I'm going to link those as well just so you can see the work of those people so I uh, you know I can, I'll, I'll credit the creators and then we've got um, you know like a sort of a panning of the scene here we're going to learn about uh, motion blur about the depth of field about changing the sort of the sharpness and then how we can sort of transition to a scene where we're going to notice a character approaching this and the character is like animated from Mixamo uh, and just basic animations, but it's important to just see how the sequence can be used to tie in multiple animations um, for, for characters at the same time. Then we have the animation here in which he sort of gets close to the skull, much like in the Dark Souls um, cinematic. Then he sort of like pans, you know, uh, goes away. And then you've got this sort of fluid smoke building up in the scene and sort of coming towards our character here. And he is quite confused. Not really knowing what he's, what's going on. Now, I've kept this sort of angle of the scene particularly um, sort of, you know, static like this because I really wanted to sort of emphasize on some of the things that, you know, are being seen here. The camera could have obviously panned back if we wanted to. At this point, you already have all the tools that you need to know of how to edit this further from this point. But it's quite... It's not, it's not basic or anything, it's just a lot of things are at play in here to give it that sort of look. Uh, it does look like a cinematic, this is not a movie, this is not a CGI masterpiece or whatever. This is something that as a beginner to intermediate level, you'll be able to learn how to do in Unreal Engine in a course that does not want to bog you down with um, you know information that you will have to you know, you won't be able to understand what it means or you won't be able to master it until you've gained a lot more weight with uh, with, with Blender, sorry, with Unreal Engine and, you know, having a uh, knowledge of multiple workflows and so on. But yeah, let's uh, move on to the first chapter in this, yeah? Okay, now we've got Unreal Engine 5.3 open and this is the first thing that we will see when we open Unreal Engine for the first time. Obviously, you wouldn't see these all these projects because you wouldn't have them, but uh, these are just mine. Now, because we're making a cinematic, normally we want to get rid of all the filler stuff. So we're going to go into film, video and live events. And in here, you have a few options and the one that you really want is the blank scene because it contains no real um, extra flavor other on top as opposed to other things in here and this will be the most helpful to us now you can bring in some starter content if you want but we're not really going to use that and you can also enable ray tracing in here which again if you have a video card that's capable of supporting ray tracing then i would definitely take this on because it gives you uh, better shadows and everything uh, but if not, we'll leave it unticked. So we're going to use Lumen mainly, but uh, that's why we're going to leave it unticked. But again, if you have that functionality, please do use it. Now, we need to name our um, what, a project. So I'm just going to say tutorial, cinematic, tutorial, or something like that. And then you need to decide where you're going to be uh, placing it. So for me, it's going to be in here. And I'm going to press Create which will then start loading up the project. Once Unreal Engine 5.3 opens the project, you will be greeted with this particular scene for the project type that we've opened. Now, normally, depending on the type of cinematic you're going to make, this could be quite useful for you for this particular scene because it already has a lot of predefined settings already done for you. But in our particular case, we don't actually need an outdoor scene, so we're going to create our very own level, which will give us a chance to actually go through some of the basic stuff. So we're going to right click in here and create a new um, folder. We're going to call this cinematic 
tutorial like that and then we're going to double click it and in here because i want to work in a very you know nice and cohesive fashion i'm going to create a, um, a folder where i'm going to call this maps so this is where we're going to create our new level so we're going to right click go for level call this lv and then we can say main cinematic as an example um, and then we can double click this and it will ask us to save the level cinematic so we're going to press save selected now when we get in here we actually have no more assets anything the, the whole level is open is, is closed by the way this content browser i'm bringing it by either clicking it here or control space which brings up this window now when we're in here um, we could quickly set up our scene if we wanted to using a tool that's found in Unreal Engine. And uh, again, this kind of works only for outdoor scenes. But basically, if you go up here, you press window and you go to environment light mixer, you're going to be uh, able to change these settings. Like, for example, you can create a skylight, an atmospheric light, sky atmosphere, volumetric cloud and high fog. So with just all those clicks, we've effectively created a particular scene that's very close to what we had before, um, minus the skybox, which is now just volumetric clouds. But that's a very simple setup for us to get a scene going if we wanted to. But because we're making an indoor scene, there's some things in here that we will not need, like the exponential high fog, the sky atmosphere... Uh, we'll, we'll delete the clouds and then you'll see in here that the skylight doesn't actually work without a atmosphere so we can take that off we do have a directional light we, which we will keep for now because it will allow us to be able to see some of the basic stuff that we're doing in the scene before we actually move on to creating our localized lights so in terms of scene setup that's pretty much it uh, I mean we, we don't really need a lot we just need to get something to get going and normally what you do also want to do at this point is press this cube over here and then go to a shape and create a plane and make sure the plane is in the center of the world by pressing this button to reset it to zero 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 and then you'll need to find the plane but if you can't see it just uh, have it selected and press f on the keyboard and the camera will then center onto it so this is our plane over here in the center of the world this gives us a bit of a reference point and you can see it's being lit by the directional light if we had no light, then we couldn't actually see the plane from the rest of the world, right? So that's why we keep this light in the scene. Now let's move on to the next step.